Assalamu alaikum warahmatullahi Bismillahir Rahmanir Rahim. Alhamdulillahi Rabbil Alameen wa salatu wa salam ar Rasulullah. Welcome to a brand new series of the Fiqh of Love. This is the first episode of a new series where we aim to be speaking about all the topics to do with marriage. And to join us on this journey, we have Sheikh Dr. Muhammad Salah. Assalamu alaikum, Sheikh. Wa alaikum salam wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Thank you, Jean, for hosting me. Yeah, jazakallah. Thank you for joining us. Barakallah feek. May Allah bless you and your family and all the viewers. Amin. Amin. You, you, you also. So, Sheikh, we have a, a very good topic. And I, th- I feel like this is a very relevant topic. Yes, indeed. Uh, for today, you know, for, especially for the times that we're living in. You know, we have Muslims all around the world, people who are living in Muslim societies, people who are living in non-Muslim societies. And marriage, of course, is a very important part of being a Muslim. So in this episode, we want to speak about why is it important to learn about the topic of marriage in the first place? Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim. Alhamdulillah wa salatu wa salam ala nabiyyihi wa mustafa wa ba'd. In the beginning, I'd like to invoke Allah to uh, make it easy for us to comprehend His deen and to teach us what we don't know. And to say, Rabbi shrah li sadri, wasir li amri, wahlul uqdatan min lisani yafqahu qawli. Fiqh of love is really important for every Muslim uh, to attend because we need to attain the tranquility and peace of mind, which is the main purpose of getting married. This is what the Almighty Allah stated in Surah Ar-Rum, chapter number 30, verse number 21. He said the purpose of getting married and why He created spouses for us uh, so that you may find comfort, repose and rest in them. Mm. And this is not happening nowadays in most cases. John, um, the uh, divorce rates are on the rise worldwide. It's really scary. Take for innocence in the United States, every 13 seconds, there is a divorce case. SubhanAllah. Which leaves us with like 277 divorces every hour. And that means, in other words, approximately 2.5 million divorce cases per year. That's a very scary figure. That's just in the United States. That's just in the United States. Mm. And uh, you might say, speaking on behalf of some of the viewers, but we are Muslims who are different. Well, the world now has become like a small village. That's a fact. No one can deny it. And unfortunately, whether in Muslim countries or non-Muslim countries, it has become so close because people are learning from each other. Unfortunately, they're not learning necessarily the right stuff. But... Uh, the, uh, the the social media, the internet has made the world a small village. So in Muslim countries likewise, in a country like Egypt, the divorce rate is on the rise, especially in the last few years. Uh, it's unbelievable. Every 2.5 minutes, there is one divorce. Mm. That's really scary. Uh, not to mention in, in the case A, where the Haramain, Mecca and Medina, very religious people every 10 minutes there is a divorce case uh, keep in mind that the number of the population in a country like saudi arabia is very little compared to a country like egypt compared to a country like the united states so when you know that uh, there is a divorce case every few minutes among muslims there must be something wrong and indeed there is uh, so, so I mean, this this really strengthens the 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 importance of going back to the Quran and the Sunnah for guidance. Yeah, you know, within the marriage, not only within the marriage, within everything, mm. but in the in, in this series and in this episode, we are talking about marriage, love, proposal, engagement, getting married, uh, and resolving uh, marital problems and issues that erupt between the couple in the light of the Qur'an and the guidance of Prophet Muhammad in order to really, really live a happy life. Allah Almighty said that you do not get married just to have kids and to continue your generation. This is one of the reasons. But number one reason, what was mentioned in the ayah, 
ومن آياته أن خلق لكم من أنفسكم أزواجا لتسكونوا إليها سكون calmness tranquility serenity joy delight and happiness so when you come home you come into your safe heaven you know and uh, when you come home your wife is very delighted that you've come home both of you find in this nest uh, the source of joy and delight there is only one re- there is only one way to achieve that which is to follow the guidance of the messenger of Allah peace be upon him in this regard why because since the almighty Allah sent Adam and Eve the first couple ever existed he sent them to earth from heaven then earth is not heaven earth is full of tribulations and trials tests and turmoils problems afflictions so he said fa imma ya'tiyannakum minni hudan faman ittaba'a hudaya fala yadillu wa la yashqa so you stay and you live on earth and for those of you and your offspring those who will follow my guidance those who will follow ever i reveal to them the instructions of do's and do not do's irrespective of everything in life then they will never go astray no suffer of any distress subhanallah on the other flip wa man a'rada an dhikri fa inna lahu ma'ishatan dhanka as for those who will turn away from my guidance my revelation then the life will be miserable so and and we are witnessing that on daily basis uh, now we're not talking about daily basis as a matter of fact it's per second mm. every 13 second there is a divorce case in a country in a free country like the united states it's really really scary uh, uh, i read about uh, the french uh, sociologist um, uh, saul jordan dr saul jordan uh, he made a study and uh, the study is really shocking he said that 85 percent of the marriages which experience love and love affairs before marriage end up with divorce Subhanallah. this is totally alike what people think so what we need to do is uh, mm. set aside sociology and psychology this is all good and useful but we know want to know and want to hear from Allah what will make our life happy mm. how can we experience peace of mind how can we really attain the tranquility which you Allah said and mentioned in the verse you see this leads me on to the question because of course especially in the west where mm. I'm from in England America and Europe etc there's this myth if you like that you must you know that you have love at first sight or you find your soulmate that is you know it's th- that somehow you know you're going to find the one who's meant to be and that you have love first and then you start looking at marriage even uh, within the non-muslim societies they would even have like an engagement where they would even live together they would live as a couple you know kind of as a trial basis mm-hmm. uh, and then they would get married in maybe one or two years so what does islam say about this you know in, in terms of having love before marriage that shall be discussed in very depth and detail in this program but in brief since you asked the question uh, any premarital relationship is absolutely forbidden it varies from mere looking at the other party like if you if you are a man and uh, you like a girl and you keep looking at her whether this likeness is lustful or is it true love due to qualities and uh, characters and so on you know uh, you have limitations in this respect and it goes all the way to going out to dating touching hands kissing and even sharing bed all of that uh, is regulated in islam so any pre-marital relationship is absolutely forbidden you like somebody get married then everything is permissible you can enjoy this marital relationship in a peaceful in a pleasant way but the pre-marital relationship is absolutely forbidden and we're all aware of that in the past when we come to muslim countries and we tell them that uh, i myself uh, like 25 years ago or more uh, i was in one of those nice uh, stores they sell suits uh, in new york city and i saw a couple they were walking in to buy suits one for the groom the guy and then 
uh, he required and he said that but I must find suits which uh, you know the, the sizes of my children various ages and he had four kids so I was kind of curious to, to find out you know so he said that we've been living together for 15 years and those are our kids and we finally decided it's time to get married because we really like each other after having four kids uh, this kind of relationship mm. in Islam is perceived as adultery and when I say in Islam it is not any different than in Christianity nor in Judaism yes. it is abhorred, it is forbidden in every religion there is no premarital relationship SubhanAllah so he, this, this kind of has a snowball effect because there's a lot of repercussions uh, to this as well which inshallah through this series we'll be able to actually discuss in a lot more detail you know a lot more of these topics true so Sheikh, in terms of as, as I mentioned love before marriage you know of course you say that it, we, we know that having a relationship with someone is not permissible before marriage but what about if somebody says that they actually fell in love with someone you know because I, I get a lot of questions especially on Facebook and mm. I know even on your uh, show Ask Huda mm -hmm. so many maybe over 90% of the questions that you're asked on a weekly basis uh, is not to, to that uh, extent but yes a lot of them are to do with marriage you know yeah. and divorce and, and uh, all sorts of topics so the point I wanted to ask is can somebody have the love before marriage or does it come after of course, because love is instinctual. Yeah. I mean, it happens whenever it happens. And we also believe that there is love at the first sight. Once it clicks, it clicks. Uh, Islam does not forbid that. Islam only forbids, you know, the wrong approach of how to go about it. The Messenger of Allah, peace be upon him, said in the hadith, مَا رَأَيْتُ لِلْمُتَحَبَّيْنِ مِثْلَ النِّكَاحِ there is no other solution for a couple who are in love other than marriage. Mm. Just get married. But the question is, uh, you know, how to differentiate between love which is based on facts, different from love which is based on fiction, yeah. or yeah. love which is, uh, in other words, you can call it lustful love, mm. you know, because of the look, because of the way she dresses, mm. because of the way he's uh, grown muscles. You know the appearance uh, so just hold that thought there a moment Sheikh we're gonna take that as an opportunity just to take a short break sure. and uh, inshallah join us after the break we'll be right back to answer some of these questions <laughs> Assalamu alaikum warahmatullahi welcome back to the fiqh of love Sheikh, before the break, we were speaking about the love, the love, the fiqh of love, you know, in Islam, and the importance of actually studying, you know, from an Islamic perspective, marriage, and all the uh, details regarding marriage. So, Sheikh, back to what we were speaking about. How can studying this topic make us a better spouse? Of course, uh, when, when the person appreciates the blessings of getting married and this appreciation is achieved through learning your duties before acquiring your rights. Mm -hmm. Before uh, asking about your rights, you, uh, you got to understand that it comes with a package, mutual rights and duties. The Almighty Allah says in the Quran, وَلَهُنَّ مِثْلُ الَّذِي عَلَيْهِنَّ بالمعروف, In the second chapter of the Quran, so this ayah keeps a perfect balance between the rights and the duties of both the husband and the wife. So it doesn't go in one direction that you only have rights without duties. Mm. Uh, nor the wife demands rights without fulfilling any duties. No, both have rights and duties. So this program will educate us concerning the rights and the duties of both the spouses. And that would lead to become a better spouse to your husband or to your wife and to be a better parent as well and to be a better servant before Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to be saved and to save 
your family because when a couple meet and they love each other and they get, uh, they want to get married and they don't ask what is halal and what is haram whether the uh, consent of the garden is required or not whether uh, we need to uh, process a marriage contract or can just uh, move in and share bed and become like a boyfriend and a girlfriend a lot of people don't know John so it is our duty to educate the Muslim Ummah and it is the duty of every couple and every young man and woman who are interested in getting married to learn about the ahkam, the rules and regulations of getting married, of marriage, of engagement, of the dowry, of the witnesses, the consent of the guardian in the case of uh, the girl and the responsibilities of each. So, so uh, I like that point, that, you know, the, f you know, focus on your duties before the rights. Of course. So, well, it's a beautiful point. I think, that, I think that reminds me of one of the statements of one of the companions. He said something very similar, that he, he fears asking his wife uh, for all of his rights out of the fear that she might ask him for his. Yeah, and, and, actually, and actually there is a, a better response by the great companion Abdullah ibn Abbas. May Allah be pleased with him and his father. Abdullah ibn Abbas was the Prophet's cousin and he's known as the Tarjuman of the Quran, the greatest interpreter of the Quran. When he came across this ayah, وَلَهُنَّ مِثْلُ الَّذِي عَلَيْهِنَّ بِالْمَعْرُوفِ Look how he comprehended the ayah. Every man in the world, in every marriage counseling I attended and I, um, you know, operated, uh, normally the man is complaining that when he comes home, his wife is not neat. She's not dressed up nicely. She's not wearing the makeup and the perfume that he likes. But very few men realize that they too smell <laughs> and they're coming from work with sweat and they just want to hug and kiss and share bed immediately like she's supposed to be ready but you're not ready yourself so Abdullah ibn Abbas radiyallahu an, anhuma said I swear to Allah I adorn myself the same way I like my wife to adorn herself for me you like your wife to wear makeup and to look beautiful for you to comb her hair and to do whatever every woman does right I uh, like to see her always like uh, on the night of consummating the marriage, correct? Mm. You too. So this is what Abdullah ibn Abbas, how would one adorn herself, himself like uh, in, in the case of the husband? Taking a, a bath, combing your hair, wearing a nice perfume, brushing your teeth, you know, mm. things of this nature. Uh, men, they wear kuhl, which beautifies them mm. like women uh, exactly. So this is just a simple example of how the companions of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wasallam were uh, imitating and following the footsteps of the Prophet وسلم, of becoming the best husbands to their wives before demanding their wives to yeah. be the best wives to their husbands. So presenting yourself well, smelling nice, looking good. Yes. You know, this reminds me of a, of a, a joke of a, <laughs> of a where, you know, the man was asking for his wife to smell good and look good. And she said she was complaining that he doesn't brush his teeth. Yeah, and he said that he brushes his teeth uh, once a week, <laughs> but he does it so. But he brushes his teeth so good that he only has to do it once a week. <laughs> <laughs> but but Subhanallah, it's it's an important point that as men, sometimes you know, if you've been married for five, ten, twenty, maybe mm -hmm. forty, fifty years, even, you know, sometimes you let yourself go on both sides. You know, as they say, the men and the women, it's important to keep that nice look the image keep the uh the how can you put it the the spark as they say correct the marriage and and, and also you know uh, this course and the series is aimed towards really saving the individual the spouse whether it's he or she you know in the in arabic the word zawj applies for both the groom and the bride the husband and the wife uh, Azwajan is plural of zawj, and azawj applies for both the man and the woman. Uh, so the series is aimed towards saving the individual as a spouse, as a zawj, a husband or a wife, as a parent and as a child, and that means saving the family and then family saving the whole society. When the family is healthy, and then we have so many healthy families 
that results in the health of the entire society, the success of the entire society. But when the nucleus, the seed, which is the family, is corrupt, what do you expect from the whole society? To be corrupt likewise. And that's why no matter how advanced the non-Muslim societies we see, but we see the highest suicide rate and the highest divorce rate and the highest un unmarried rate uh, uh, in these societies. He, even you find with the highest rate of people who are in prison, you know, are people from uh, broken families, you know, people who are raised without father or without a mother, you know, without the, the support of the family unit as well. Absolutely. Mm. Even though divorce is permissible in Islam, mm. but in this uh, series, inshallah, we're going to learn the danger of divorce mm. because it's not only there are many considerations the biggest consideration is whether you have kids or not because in case of separation they suffer a great deal and the suffering reflects on the entire community on the society on the state it is not only on themselves not on the small family as they may think so the person really have not to be selfish mm. and to think deeper and with a broader mind that I may bear some suffering for the sake of saving, you know, not the small mm. little family that you uh, are, uh, it's family father, but the entire society at large. And it's important on that note to actually think about what, but when divorce does happen and there are children involved, uh, you know, that both sides, you know, the, 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 the husband and the wife or the, who have separated, that they should still allow the the father to or the mother, you know, to... to deal with their duties towards the children you know because a lot of a lot of times in, in yeah. today's society people are taking the children and they're using the children as a kind of well inshallah mm. and in one of these episodes we'll, we'll be speaking about the mm. custody and uh, the rights and the duties of both spouses towards the children in case of uh, separation but um, we just wanted to, the viewers to uh, be aware of the fact that the seas is aimed towards uh, hopefully, inshallah, educating the Muslim community to have and to form a better lifestyle, a better family, in order to attain the tranquility which Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala inspired us with when He said, لِتَسْكُنُوا إِلَيْهَا And this sakina, this tranquility and serenity will not be achieved without those ingredients which He said, وَجَعَلَ بَيْنَكُمْ مَوَدَّةً وَرَحْمَةً And He made and He placed between you as a husband and wife Mawadda, which is compassion, and uh, Rahma, which is mercy. And compassion is a lot broader and uh, more general than mere love. Because uh, I, I can simply love you because you look cool, or because you're smart, or because of your complexion, because the way you talk, because you impress people, because of some talents that you have. But this is not the only component which really should make a person form the decision of loving somebody to the extent of uh, choosing him or her to become their life mate, mm -hmm. to become the parent of their children, whether the father or the mother of their children. It's a lot deeper than that. It's a lot more serious than just meeting somebody, you like him or you like her, hey, let's get married. You know, in, in best case scenario, they don't want to commit adultery. They don't want to have a boyfriend and girlfriend relationship. They say, we'll do it in halal. But there are many questions to be asked before making that final decision, inshallah. Jazakallah khair, Shaykh. SubhanAllah. It's a very nice introduction. I'm very excited to actually get on with the, the rest of the, the show. And uh, that's all we have time for today. So we'd just like to welcome you all back next time. Please join us again next time for another episode of the fiqh of love, where we can discuss these matters a lot further. Jazakallah khair, salam alaykum wa